Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing on this fine morning? It is April 27, 2002. It is Wednesday, and we are ready to do the frets. So this is for the Michelangelo Badio Rocky guitar. And I've got this standard neck that you buy off, I think I bought it off Amazon. I think I paid like 60 something dollars for it, 24 fret. Um, and I'm gonna do the fret work. So what I do is level crown and polish the frets, do all the fret ends. I got my fret end file, and these are the tools I use. I'm gonna tape up the neck. Well, first straighten the neck with my tools, and I'm going straight edge and Straighten the frets and then tape them off and the usual stuff. So I'll see every step. I'm not going to go thorough into it this time because, you know, my past videos I always go kind of thorough into this process. But if you need to see how to do it, just see some of my past videos. And when I get to the stage and, of course, I go through this. I use the sandpaper method. And this time I'm going through 800, um, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 7,000, 8,000, and 10,000 grit sandpapers. And I work my way up. And all right, so like I said, I'm gonna first address any fret ends. I like to round the fret ends. I do, they do feel sharp on both sides. So I'll do that. Then I'll tape them up and then I'll see you in a sec. Alright, quick update. I'm got the tape spread out, everything leveled off, I did the fret end file, I did everything, all the ends that are sweet. Alright, I'm going to mark it with a marker and I'm gonna level the frets and we'll see you there. Alright, another quick update. All the frets are perfectly level to each other. And everything is looking good. I used my rocker arm and made sure. Uh, and we'll see you next step. I'm gonna remark them and put a crown. Alright, see you in a bit. Alright, quick update. All the frets have been crowned and looking good. This neck should play amazingly. Alright, now it's time to polish and round the ends and go through the sandpapers and we'll see you in a little bit. Alright, another quick update. All the frets have been rounded and polished and they are looking awesome. Yeah, you can see I rounded each one. Did the fret ends with the fret end file and they are shiny. Yeah, looking good. Okay. Yeah, this uh this neck will play amazingly. As long as I get the intonation and all that set perfectly, it's gonna play awesome. Alright, so I'm gonna take the tape off and then we're gonna start working on the headstock shape. We're gonna come up with paper templates and make the shape. Alright, I'll see you next step. I'll see you when I get these uh all this tape off and cleaned up and I'll show you how shiny they are again. Alright, see you in a minute. Alright, working on the headstock shape and I got a template drawn out uh, with the uh, truss rod cover shape as well and I'm basing it on pictures I found online and that's basically the shape I'm going to go for. <laughs> it's pretty cool looking. Yeah, so let me cut this out and then see apply it to the headstock. Well, we'll see you in a sec. Oh, alright, got the shape cut out. Now I'll apply it to the headstock and I'll see you in a sec. Alright, and I traced it out. So that's going to be the main shape on the headstock. And then I'll have to cut out this little bit here. I'll cut out that little bit and add it to the bit. And then I'll cut another piece here and add that and glue that in. Alright, let me get out the... Uh, scroll saw and we'll get working on that all right see you in a sec oh and i forgot to show you i took all the tape off and cleaned it all up i just wanted to show you how nice and shiny the frets were yeah it turned out really well all right we'll get cutting on this and we'll see you in a sec it's gonna be cool all right got the scroll saw queued up and i always apply you know a piece of wood on there so when it slides on the scroll saw it doesn't ding or scratch the neck at all all right we'll see you in a sec Alright, successful main bits, and then I'll get the orbital sander, and I'll get that, and then the orbital sander will do that. Alright, so now I'm going to trace out the bits and cut them out. Alright, see you in a bit. Alright, got the point bit shaped out, and let me trim it out. I'll be right back. Alright, got my bits cut out. <laughs> Pretty cool. And I'll glue them to the headstock, and we'll see you in a bit. 
Alright, got the two bits uh, glued on, and now I'll break out the orbital sander, and I'll get all these smoothed out. I'll be back in a bit. And actually, before I go shape the neck with the orbital sander, since how I have the uh, saw already out, I'm going to trace out the truss rod cover, custom truss rod cover, and make a custom input jack for the Playboy Bunnyhead guitar. Alright, we'll see you in a bit. All right, got it traced out on this one ply material, and we're gonna cut it, and I'll see you in a sec. All right, it turned out pretty cool. Yeah, I'll refine the shape when I go uh, to, re you know, I'll sand it and make it more perfect. But okay, all right, we're gonna cut out the uh, Playboy Bunny input jack plate. See you in a bit. All right, Playboy Bunny input jack plate, just a square, and then all around the edges and make it more perfect the way that need to be. Make me one. They didn't have, you know, the one that I bought originally was a little bit too wide for the body. So, okay. All right, time to finish on the headstock nape and get the, uh, the circular orbital sander out, and we'll see you in a little bit. All right, we're outside. I got the circular orbital sander, and we're going to make the edges nice and perfect. And we're going to install the tuning keys and install the truss rod then we're gonna tape it up and we're gonna tape the front after we get everything perfect all right we'll see you next step uh, all right got the headstock shaped perfectly looks good awesome and now what I'll do is I'll get some Bondo uh, and fill in all the little cracks and I'll make it look more perfect all right we'll see you in a sec Alright, got my uh, body pillar in there, and once I sand that smooth, the shape will be finalized and perfect. Looks pretty good. Alright, now I got my tuning keys, and I'm going to try to set it up. I guess the thinking is I want straight lines. That's why I got these lines drawn on here. Straight lines to the tuning keys, but I still want the tuning keys to be centered between the two points. But we'll give it a look, and you know, it's custom guitar, so. Alright, we'll see you in a sec. All right, laying out the tuning keys, how I want it spaced. I'd like the same space between here and here, but then again, I want the the lines to be straight. So when the strings come off and ride over the nut to be like a straight line through the headstock. So this is why I'm doing it like this. Because, you know, this is in traditional headstock shape, and I don't want to do it like, you know, spacing and then end up way far and have a big old gap but all right i'll figure this out and i'll be right back all right got the exact placement of where i'm going to put the tuning keys and i'm going to use a different router bit this time around i'm going to use a router like of the tearaway instead of the other ones that i was using but wish me luck i'll do one or two and i'll be right back all right well that was a heck of a lot easier uh wow i just Stumbled on a new way of uh, setting tuning keys, and as you can see, I'm pretty much done with all six already. And whew, what I did normally, you know, you've seen the past videos. Normally, what I do is I individually bore each one out, and then there's always an inconsistency sometimes with the spacing and everything like that. But this time, I, again, because of the odd headstock, and I needed you know the same gap, and I wanted it all in a straight line with the angle and everything like that I decided to mark you know a certain distance down and then throw a line across and then I measured exact between the two and then right where the X was I started with the smaller bit and then <laughs> eventually I ended up with a bigger bit and there was hardly any tear away at all there was a little itty bitty you can barely see at the top here just a little bit that's gonna be covered anyway but yeah it turned out really good and these Look like they're all in a row and it, it no tear out like I said and I think this is going to work out way better. I might have to do this next time as well because this saved me, saved me about two hours because normally it takes me about an hour and a half to do all those by hand and if you recall before I had the Dremel tool and that'd be you know, just a lot of noise, a lot of smoke, a lot of, man saved me just a lot of. So alright let me uh, put the rest of the bits in and get the screws i bought some new bits um and screw in the things and then we'll meet you in the next step i'll be right back all right tuning key installation successful yeah it's looking awesome all right 
and then I'll you know touch up and make sure the uh, the, the filler is perfect. All right, next step is to install the new nut, and then the uh, you know install the new uh, truss rod cover, and then make sure everything's perfect. Then we can start taping this up, and then put a little silver paint on the front, and then let this set, and then uh, we'll see see you next step. All right, successful removal of the old nut. I swear, I know it's gonna sound funny, but I just gotta say it. The next, the nuts that come on these, these are some ugly nuts. I tell you what. Not that I've seen a lot of nuts in my day. Well, guitar-wise, seen a lot of nuts, but these nuts that come on these, these you know, next you buy, they are just ugly. Anyway, ugly nuts aside. All right, these are the, this is the nut I use. The uh, permanent lubricated nuts and saddles, black tusk Q. XL and these are awesome so I'm gonna install this and it came out with no tear away it had a little bit of glue on there and I did file it down just a hair and it looks pretty smooth and I've shown the installation on these before so I'm gonna install this real quick and I'll be right back so probably have to shape it and install it and I'll be right back all right successful truss rod cover installation looking pretty sweet all right all I'm going to do now, I'm going to take everything off and I'm going to sand these little bits, make them perfect and then we can tape this up and then we'll be ready for some metallic silver paint on the top. Alright, sounds good. Alright, we'll see you next step. <laughs> sweet. Alright, nut installed and it is looking sweet. Alright, perfect. As you can see, I've got a lot of practice installing nuts. And I always check the Make sure I give a little extra room just, you know, when I adjust the saddles, when I have to widen, because I use 10 gauge strings and a lot of these are set up for 9 gauge, so I widen them a little bit. And the nut was a little close to the edges, but I think once I get the 10 gauge and I bump it over a little bit, and I could always bump over the, the high E, but it'll be good. So, alright, next thing will to be to sand the edges and make sh refine the shape and then to install the truss rod cover. All right, she's all taped up and ready for some paint. I'm gonna blow it off a little bit and get a little tack cloth going and then put a coat or two of metallic silver on there. Shouldn't be that hard. All right, we'll see you in a sec. All right, the paint on the headstock is completed. <laughs> it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, silver. Yeah, I had a little thing with the tape when I peeled off the tape, but I was able to fix it, so it should be okay. Once it dries a little bit, I might try to push down on it a little bit. Do the wet finger thing, but it looks fine. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, because it's supposed to be metal, and metal has imperfections and stuff. So, Alright, looking good. Alright, we'll let this set for a day, and then we'll work on the logo tomorrow. And then it's just about time to... End to put this sucker together and work on the Playboy Bunny head guitar again. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Hope everybody has a good night. Talk to you soon. Yeah, I got one more thing I'm gonna do for the day. And I'm, I've been on the fence back and forth about this, whether to, here's a sample piece and I was able to, you know, put a shine on there. I wasn't sure if I should leave it dull, but I definitely have to take off the red marks for when I did the screw holes. But I'm just gonna go with some various sandpapers. I'm not going to try to make it a super mirror finish, but I do want to put a little bit of a, a sheen to it. So I've got me some water, got a few drops of dish detergent, and I got some leftover recycled, uh, some sandpaper from 5,000 grit, 7,000 grit, I think a little bit lower, and then I got some metal polish. So I'm going to put a little bit of a sheen to it, and then have that done, and then all I would have to left to do would be put the, uh, my logo on the headstock and maybe a Michael A MAB on the headstock as well. I'm not sure if I'll do that or not. I might do my initials, but MAB because you know a tribute to his guitar. But um all right, so let me uh, put a sheen on here and I'll see you in a sec. I just want to show you what it looks like right now. More or less just metal aluminum or tin or Alright, how's everybody doing? Just a final quick update. <laughs> All right, just so wanted to show you how the uh, the metal for the uh, Michael Patio rocket guitar turned out. I think it turned out pretty cool. 
And it's perfect for what I want. I didn't want like a mirror finish. Like uh, the mirror over there on the uh, Mick Mars Tribute Telecaster that I did before. I wanted it to still look like a piece of metal. Um, and I could like, you know, sandpaper it all the way up and make this look like a complete mirror. But I think it's going to look really good with the body. So just wanted to show you how good it turned out. Yeah, and I put some um, some good polish on there, so hopefully it won't tarnish, and it won't be like really easy to attract fingerprints. So there it is. And that's cool. And I like I uh, already saw in an earlier video I finished the headstock, and it's pretty cool. Now all I got left to do on this guitar before assembly is to. Let me show you the headstock again real quick if I can grab it. Yeah. Turned out really cool. Yeah. And I touched... My fingerprints are on the, the top there. Because I was just touching it and seeing if I could smooth out that little imperfection. But it's fine. Yeah. But pretty cool. So all we got left to do on this guitar is to do the headstock logo. And I'll do that tomorrow morning better picture of the headstock how it turned out really cool and I think I will do a Michael Badio M-A-B there's an M-A-B that goes right about there and I'm gonna do that just for the Michael Badio Angelo Badio but yeah pretty cool so that's it for today and we will pick up and continue tomorrow snake by the Prince symbol guitar so there we go and then after that, I'll be starting to finish on the Playboy Bunny head guitar. But yeah, that was a pretty cool guitar to do. Um, if anybody's familiar with the band Slade, uh, I recently discovered the Super Y.O.B. guitar. And it's a David Hill uh, signature guitar. And I'm thinking about doing that. I will post some pictures of that guitar pretty soon. But that guitar looks very interesting. So it's the Super Y.O.B. guitar. And Slade was a band from um, from Europe. Uh, I think from either Scotland or somewhere in that area. And they were the original writers of the songs Mama Mama We're All Crazy Now and Come On Feel the Noise. Which were both covered by the band Quiet Riot back in the 80s. But yeah, that would be pretty cool. But anyway, alright. So hope everybody's having a good night and we will see you tomorrow. Take it easy. All right, how's everybody doing? Just a final quick update. <laughs> All right, just wanted to show you how the uh, the metal for the uh, Michael Badio rocket guitar turned out. I think it turned out pretty cool. And it's perfect for what I want. I didn't want like a mirror finish, like uh, the mirror over there on the uh, Mick Mars tribute telecaster that I did before. I wanted it to still look like a piece of metal. Um, and I could, like, you know, sandpaper it all the way up and make this look like a complete mirror. But I think it's going to look really good with the body. So just wanted to show you how good it turned out. Yeah. And I put some, um, some good polish on there so hopefully it won't tarnish. And it won't be like really easy to attract fingerprints. So there it is. And that's cool. And I like I uh, already saw in an earlier video I finished the headstock. And it's pretty cool. Now all I got left to do on this guitar before assembly is to let me show you the headstock again real quick if I can grab it. Yeah. Turned out really cool. Yeah, and I touched, my fingerprints are on the, the top there, because I was just touching it and seeing if I could smooth out that little imperfection, but it's fine. Yeah, but pretty cool. So all we got left to do on this guitar is to do the headstock logo, and I'll do that tomorrow morning. Here's a better picture of the headstock, how it turned out really cool. And I think I will do a Michael Badio M-A-B. There's an M-A-B that goes right about there. And I'm going to do that just for the Michael Badio. Angelo Badio. 
but yeah pretty cool so that's it for today and we will pick up and continue tomorrow snake by the prince symbol guitar so there we go and then after that i'll be starting to finish on the playboy bunny head guitar but yeah that was a pretty cool guitar to do um if anybody's familiar with the band slade uh, I recently discovered the Super Y.O.B. guitar, and it's a David Hill uh, signature guitar, and I'm thinking about doing that. I will post some pictures of that guitar pretty soon, but that guitar looks very interesting. So it's the Super Y.O.B. guitar, and Slade was a band from, um, from Europe, uh, I think from either Scotland or somewhere in that area. And they were the original writers of the songs Mama Mama We're All Crazy Now and Come On Feel the Noise, which were both covered by the band Quiet Riot back in the 80s. But yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But anyway, all right. So hope everybody's having a good night and we will see you tomorrow. Take it easy. All right, everybody. The time has finally come. It's time to assemble the rocket guitar. I just wanted to show you I was able to put a full... 2k clear coat and it's been curing for about 30 hours or so and it looks amazing look at that finish wow and i purposely uh used a little sandpaper on the, the back there just to make it kind of like uneven the uh, metallic silver paint that way it looked like real metal and give another cool look yeah i just wanted to show you how awesome that clear coat turned out yeah, that, uh, that 2K, I use 2K Spray Max, and that stuff is just amazing. Look at that. Okay, so first things first, first thing we got to do is we got to attach the metal front. So I'll get the metal front and then start attaching all the screws. Here's all the equipment and all the parts that I'm going to put on here. And it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to get this guitar together. But all right, time has come. We'll see you in a sec. Alright, I put the metal piece, just laid it on the top there. Just want to show you how awesome that looks. And I did correct that, by the way. Uh, I know some of you noticed that it was actually a little bit different than the other side, but I fixed that before I painted it. But yep. Alright. There's the metal, and I'm going to start putting the screws in there. That's the first step. Alright, we'll see you in a bit. I just want to show you some of the progress. Got some of the screws on there. Working it. <laughs> it's looking awesome. That is just so cool. Man. I'm glad I decided to put a little bit of a sheen on that. That is cool. Very cool. Alright, let me continue with the screws and I'll be back in a little bit. Alright, all the screws have been installed and it is looking sweet. Oh wow, that is amazing. Look at that. Oh jeez. That is just so awesome. Alright, next step after this, uh, of course as always, get the ground wire, fish it through the cavity, and install the bridge and the tailpiece. I haven't seen a bit. Alright, got the ground wire for the bridge installed and one piece of the bridge and I put the tailpiece on we'll be right back. Alright, bridge is installed with the tailpiece. Ah, surprise. I gotta put an adjustable bridge on there and you'll be able to intonate individually from the bridge and from the headstock. So yeah. Alright, next step will be to wire that through and then get the uh, the single coil pickup pushed through. Alright, we'll see you in a bit. All right, another quick update. Got the single coil put in place. Gonna fish it through, and then gonna have to get the uh, the humbucker with the EMG81. Looking pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of went uneventful. Uh, fingers crossed. All right, we'll see in a little bit. It's looking good. All right, got all the pickups and the bridge installed. Whew. Tell you what been at it for about a long time today so just want to show you where I'm at okay okay next uh, step is going to be to wire the input jack and the switch and the pedometer and then wire it all together 
Alright, I'm gonna flip it over and I'll see what we got. See you in a second. Alright, got the input jack. I'm getting ready to wire it. I got all the wires coordinated. Now it's gonna solder them real quick. Alright, we'll see you in a bit. Alright, got the input jack wired up and installed. Looks pretty good. It's not exactly centered, but it's okay. Alright, now it's time to install the 9 volt battery compartment and we'll be right back. Alright, got the 9 volt battery compartment installed. Alright, good to go. Now we're getting ready to wire it. I'll get the pedometer and the selector switch ready and we'll see you in a bit. Alright, quick update. I got everything wired, everything installed. Took a little while. Um, didn't go exactly as planned. I had to redo a bunch of stuff and I did stuff wrong. but. I finally got it together and we're gonna go for a full-on test. I got the volume attached. Let's go with it off first. It's in the off position. This up position is the off for the uh, humbucker. Okay, so I got it plugged in. Got the volume all the way up and I should read on the single coil. Alright, I do and nothing on the humbucker all right sounds good and when I flick it down the light should come on with the light comes on and I should have both the humbucker and the single coil yeah all right well, let me check the volume turn the volume all the way down with the light still on nothing sounds good successful wiring job and another thing too is pretty cool is when you unplug it the light goes off so, alright. So, oh, successful wearing job, thank God. Oh man, I didn't think I'd ever get this thing back together. And I did put quite a few fingerprints, but hopefully I can get them out. Alright, so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put the back plate cover on and we should be good to go. Alright, let me flip it over one sec. Alright, got all the wires tucked in the best as possible. Now I'll get the back plate cover and I'll install that real quick and we'll see you in a sec. Alright, got the back plate cover installed and everything's looking good. I retested it to make sure that nothing came undone while putting the cover back on, so we're good to go. Whew, I tell you what, it's been, uh, this is already the next day, this is already 3 o'clock the next day, I think it's Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday the 6th, I do believe. Alright, so let me go hang this back on the, uh, the rack and then we'll clean up my mess here and then start working on the neck. Alright, we'll see you in a little bit. Right, good evening everybody how's everybody doing all right like i said before got the 2k nice and hard it's time to work on the neck for the rocket guitar my patio rocket all right let me install some tuning keys and what i'm doing and i'll be right back all right we'll see you in a little bit all right got all the tuning keys installed and it is looking sweet yeah i love that 2k finish nice and glamour Alright, next step is to join the guitar to the body for the first time. So, let me crack out the body and take it off the hanger, and then we'll get these two together. <laughs> we'll see you in a sec. Alright, got the body off the hanger, and the neck, and get ready to join the two together. Alright, this is the fun part, the awesome part, uh, but the stressful part. Alright, fingers crossed. This should go well, because I didn't have to paint the neck and I shouldn't have anything go wrong but you never know. Alright, we'll see you in a sec. Alright, the neck is on and it's looking awesome. Oh wow. I am so pleased with Look, the neck went on without a hitch. But look at that. That is just absolutely killer. Oh man. Wow. Yeah, that that turned out pretty awesome, I have to say. I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite guitars that I've built so far. Uh, I know I might have said that in the past, but wow, look at that. See how I contoured the neck joint? And just everything really came together here. Wow, that is so amazing. Alright, the next step, what I'm going to do... I'm going to set this down in the mire. Wow, that is so awesome. I'm gonna check out my measurements, they should be good. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some metal polish and I'm gonna clean up some of these fingerprints that I put on there during the installation. 
and then I'm gonna really saturate this board is pretty dry so I'm gonna saturate it uh, like I said before in past videos what I used to saturate the board or you know feed and wax the uh, beeswax the orange oil what I'll do is I'll I'm getting kind of low on the order some more of this stuff this stuff is the best stuff if ever you need a saturated dry board I recommend this by far it's the best better than lemon oil better than any other you know stew mac products it's awesome you can find it on Amazon it's not expensive it's not super cheap but it's the best quality what you do is you saturate the board and then once you soak in for a couple minutes then you wipe it off and I usually do it two or three times then you put the strings on and it, it'll just stay saturated it's really good anyway I'll do that and I'll be right back I'll see you in a bit I just want to show you real quick the, how saturated the board gets. Saturated with the uh, the uh, orange oil, and it looks good. And you can see it it really soaks it in. Um, I'll let this saturate for a while. I'm going to get some metal polish, and I'm going to clean this off. Be right back. All right, got some metal polish. Get ready to apply to rag. I just want to show you the metal polish that I do use. It's just right here. Duro coating, metal polish. This stuff's really good. I mean, it's, you got an exterior look and everything, but it, yeah, it really brings out the shine. If you were to want to bring any kind of metal to like a mirror finish, um, you would use this. You'd use like a high, high uh, speed buffer, and it would bring like metal like this to mirror. I didn't want to go to, quite to the mirror. I still wanted to look like metal, but yeah, I'm gonna apply it and I'll be right back. And then we'll get ready to do some strings. And real quick, the strings that I'm gonna use. Normally, I go with the uh, the Ernie Ball 52 to 10s. But sometimes on this, the guitars that I want to play a lot of lead on, like I'll probably do a lot of lead playing on this particular guitar, um, I'll do half, maybe the first four strings, the low E, the A, the D, the G, and then maybe the B and the E, the 9, and yeah, if you can bring it, 9 and 11. Sometimes I go 9, 11, and then 16 on the uh, t top strings, and then with the bottom strings, I just use my custom set. But and I do believe, I can't remember, I think it's 56, 46, uh, 36, I do believe, for the first 36 strings, the EAD. But anyway, all right, let me get the metal polished and we're ready for stringing. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, got it polished up. Looks good. And got the, the prep board nice and saturated and uh, rejuvenated. Remember how dry it was? And now look at it, it looks awesome. All right, so I could put a high buff on this polish too it's like polish could buff on it but I think it'll be okay uh, I'll wipe it a little bit and we'll start with some strings we put some strings on it and I'll see you in a sec all right how's everybody doing okay another quick update put the strings on there I adjusted the nut you know I cut the nut slots everything like that set it up this guitar plays amazing I'm so happy with the way this turned out Wow this guitar is sweet, I swear. Uh, it's been a very rewarding build. I mean, this this guitar has definitely had challenges. <laughs> it's had some setbacks. It's had some altercations. But overall, I think it turned out. I hope I paid homage to Michael Angelo Batio and his awesome rocket guitar. Wow, yeah, this this is this is just amazing. Cool. All right, I'm gonna do a full video and a full photo shoot. And if you follow me on Facebook, uh, Brian Pans Guitars, um, and also on my YouTube channel, the Brian Ragland channel, I post all these videos and everything like that. So, just wanted to give you a quick show with the strings. <laughs> it's just amazing. Wow. Yeah. And I also put the truss rod cover on just to. Just the neck, the truss rod, and everything like that. The action is super low. I mean, it's it's just awesome. Uh, I've been setting up in guitars for quite a while now, so I've become kind of a I wouldn't say a master, but I'm getting very proficient at making guitars play really well. So, done a lot of fret jobs, a lot of leveling, crowning, and polishing of the frets. Um, and all my measurements were dead on. I mean, it was pretty much intonated. I think I adjusted each string a little bit, and uh, maybe the A string, but pretty much it was intonated spot on. So, 
Measurements are good, so what I'm doing is working. So anyway, just a quick video. And, you know, I'll do the photo shoot and the video, little clippets. I think I might play some Randy Rhodes or something, something in the background um, recording. I got a full recording set up and everything like that. So, all right, everybody, thanks for watching this build. Um, and we will see the next build, which I'll be starting a couple very soon. And I'll show you there is, you know, I'll reveal my next <laughs> epic build. So, all right, everybody, from Brian, Brian Pan's guitars. Um, and Raglan guitars. We'll see you in a little bit. Alright, talk to you soon.